Hello there, and welcome back to the Closet Historian Side Hustle and Series, where I go through and talk about how I'm doing more in a more personal sense, um, and also how my business life is going. So basically documenting my struggle with side hustles in general, trying to build them all together between, well, I used to do blogging, didn't really do very well with that in 2020, blogging, YouTube, sewing, um, potentially doing patterns in the future, my Etsy shop, which didn't really happen in 2020 either, um, and then also writing because I do eventually want to become a published fiction author. But we didn't make pro much progress in that arena either this last year. But again, we're trying not to get down on ourselves for A, not making progress in general, and B, certainly for not making progress in 2020, which was a trash basket. So I usually make side hustle and updates more so throughout the year. This year I didn't have very many updates, but alas, hopefully in the future I will have more things to update on. But you know, progress and time both sped up and slowed down in 2020, so I didn't have a lot of multiple side hustle and videos, I just had a few, and yet still here I will have my wrap up of 2020 situation, go over my what my 2020 goals were and how I did on those or how they had to change, because obviously 2020 was a transformative time. And then um, I will usually make a second video that is an independent goals video for the next year, so that will be coming up soon here as well for 2021, a whole new you know, ideas about what I'm going to be doing this next year, and I'll put those in that video, which will be coming later this month. <clears throat> so let's take a look at what my my goals for 2020 were. Um, I said that I had a goal to write, but then I did I did not make it a priority. Um, I made YouTube my priority instead, um, which in some ways I, I had to, um, and I also sort of have to. But also sometimes I think it has led to me being more anxious, both trying to uh, thinking too hard about YouTube and not being able to spend, a lot, or not choosing to spend more time on writing, which of course is what keeps me balanced in some ways, uh, like stable or happy. <laughs> um, so that's something to think about. But I wasn't always in the best headspace in 2020, of course. I assume like most people, because sometimes lockdown started to get to me, sometimes uh, like fear, like the visceral kind of like fear for my family and myself, got too overwhelming. Um, it's kind of always in the background this year, of course, because no one I love, including me, is vaccinated yet. So there's always this low to high level of fear going on and that doesn't create the best headspace for creativity necessarily. And so even though it was my main goal last year to write, I wasn't always in a mentally, not stable, like I was, I'm fine, um, but like a stable enough position emotionally, I guess, to dive into writing and to write new work, I suppose. Um, I did do a lot of editing last year, which we'll get to eventually. And my other big goal was to pursue a literary agent to, you know, try and promote all that writing. Um, but also I didn't do that last year. And I haven't queried in a couple of years now. Um, and that was something that I was feeling bad about. But now after this last year, I'm not. And I'm kind of uh, reaching this new place with the current finished manuscripts I have that I'm not sure that I want them to be my first like forays uh, into trying to be published. Um, I don't know if this is, the times have changed since I wrote the first book in this series that I'm currently working on. And I'm not sure it's the best book for this time. I don't know, it could be just insecurity that's making me feel that way. But I sort of feel like those works, I need to, I want to finish them up in some ways and like set them on the shelf for a little while and work on some other new ideas that may be more, not like they're more timely, but they are more what the world may need right now. Hopefully, <laughs> she says big headedly. But really, I've just been coming to terms in the last year with instead of like those two goals may not be something that can exist in the same like year as a theme. So last year I wanted to write more and I wanted to seek uh, representation. And really those are almost like two separate tasks that I don't exactly have time to do both of them at once. So if I wanted to be creatively working on new stuff and I want to be like doing the administrative stuff where it's like writing query letters, uh, making spreadsheets of different agents to uh, talk about what the requirements are and stuff like that. I usually make like an Excel spreadsheet of all the agents I'm interested in, what each one's different requirements are, how I'm supposed to contact each one. It's very like doing your homework or like doing college admissions or something very like structured to do that uh, like querying and um, reaching out to agents. So it is like a very time consuming task and like nerve wracking task. And I just don't think I can focus on that while I'm still also trying to work on new stuff. And so that was what I was you know, planning on doing in 2020 was working on new stuff and also querying. And I just don't think I can do those two things congruent, congruently, 
concurrently, concurrently, <laughs> I can't, mm, words. Um, so I, for this next year, I'm not even making it a goal of mine, mm, spoiler alert for what my goals for 2021 are gonna be. I'm not going to be seeking representation at all or like make it part of my goal to be doing so. Um, I think I need to write as opposed to seek representation for that writing just for the next year, um, especially since, you know, it's not like, I'm not planning on 2021 being a very social or like outgoing out in the world kind of year still just because who knows when and if i will be able to be uh, vaccinated and like the world will start to open up again currently i have no like like i can see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit but it's very dim and i have no idea what time my train is getting there you know which does lead me into one of my other goals from 2020 which uh, to, to possibly date and, and to make more friends which was a wasn't the year for that now was it wasn't gonna be the year for meeting new people out and about um, I, I tried um, actually last year I guess 10 points to me for having tried I got on a dating app for about four or five days if that maybe it was like three or four days and um, I as you most of you probably know and uh, identify as asexual i don't really ever feel spontaneous well i don't ever really feel i have never felt like meeting people out in the world in my life i've never felt like spontaneous attraction so the idea that i would be able to find a human on a device through the screen it's a wild idea it never like i feel attraction so rarely anyway that trying to do so through like an app or photos or like a small like texting kind of situation. I don't know why. I guess I have friends, my best friend, for example, who uh, like do the whole dating app thing. And I thought, okay, well, this is how people do this in the modern times, but I just don't think it will work for me. I think I just have to meet people in real life. And in order to do that, I have to be able to like go places or like maybe start volunteering or like go to a book club or group therapy. Um, but something out there in the world where I have the chance to meet people and make new friends and possibly eventually maybe more than friends. Um, but of course, 2020 was not the year for any of this because I could not, because we were all, you know, all humans had the potential to destroy each other far more than usual. Um, you know, so that wasn't going to go over well. And my last goal, I believe, was to improve my content, like my videos and, um, I think it's always a process, but I did pick up a couple of new equipment pieces this year, thanks to my patrons and to your support by watching these videos. So I got a new spotlight. Um, I was able to use some, as I said, back of the garage MDF to build a little rig above my blue table of doom to be able to do those top down views of my pattern drafting, which I think really improved my, ex even my explaining of how I do pattern drafting because I was able to just kind of stay in my flow. I'm still thinking about how I'm going to explain it while I'm doing my pattern drafting, but I can kind of keep in the flow and then doing the voiceover prevents me, like afterwards, prevents me from adding, like repeating myself too, too much in one video at least. I know each video, from one video to the other, I'm still talking about dart manipulation. Here's the apex and stuff like that. So it's the same stuff over and over again. But I think repetition is good for learning for some people at least. For me, doing something several times is how I get it stuck in my brain. So. That's probably a little bit how I teach because that's how I learn, if that makes any sense. But I do think that overhead camera was kind of a game changer for my tutorial-ish bits of my videos. Um, it is always kind of a balance of like, am I making a tutorial or am I just making a how it's made? Um, so it's like, are you just watching me make a thing with no intention ever to do it yourself? Or am I trying to teach and doing a tutorial in my video? Um, and I think it's, I, I try and do a little bit of both. There's definitely, you know, aspects where again, I'm being repetitive or um, two in the weeds because I'm trying to impart how to do something or how I do something um, and then there's parts where I'm like getting fancy with b-roll and rolling out the Halloween uh, Halloween smoke machine and the colored lighting and trying to make it a fun visual and like entertaining experience as well and I think I'm always trying to improve on being able to be more concise and better at explaining what I'm doing while also uh, like giving you an entertaining experience so it's something I'm always learning and working on really it's a whole year of stuff so yes I do I do need notes, I'm sorry. Um, but I think last year, what my like main like point that I was trying to ram home to myself and in this, my uh, same like, goals video from last year was that I needed to make writing a priority. But in 2020, I both didn't and also sometimes couldn't. 
just because my head was full of bees, which makes it hard to like write. <laughs> um, sometimes it's good to have like an escape, but sometimes I don't want an escape. I just want something that's more almost menial, which is why I got so much sewing done in 2020 because uh, when you're thinking about like national politics and what's gonna happen in general, and then also like what's happening with like the pandemic and um, if you are safe, if your family's safe and like all these things going on, like to be like, don't worry about that. I'll just write a story. No, I don't have, I couldn't have the capacity for all of that. And plus creating writing stuff, but I could hem a, like a hem, <laughs> hem a hem. So a hem, I could like cut out fabric. Like it's very like, okay, next and then next and then next. It's hard to know what to do next, what to, what should I be focusing on? If I'm making a dress, then I know, okay, the next step is to sew the side seams and then I will press those open and then I will take it back up here. And so that's part of the reason I got so much sewing done in 2020 is because it was something physical I could be doing with my hands, kept my mind just occupied enough that I could be distracted from all the things there were to think about in 2020, honestly. Um, so I got a lot more sewing done instead of writing, but that's just kind of how it had to be. But I do think in the future, something I need to um, remember to do in general or to like re balance is that like when I wrote it here, when my schedule gets messed up, my first instinct is to sacrifice my writing time um, in order to get the video done or the project done or the sewing project um, things done that I need to get done. But instead I think I need to like despite the algorithm and upload schedules and this being my job, I really do need to maintain some firm rules that I need to have set aside writing time and I can't cancel that writing time for other things because it's important to, to keep me going that I have that time set aside for writing because again it is what makes me happiest and like buoys me out of darker zones like when there are tons of bees it's probably because I haven't you know I've been getting stuck with all kinds of honey up in there and I need to have a clear out and the only really way that I can I mean, in lockdown, I mean, I, I suppose there's other opportunities for joy out there. I, ha I take a lot of joy in my sewing and creating other things, but the most joyful thing I do is when I'm in the thick of it writing. And so I need to let myself have some of that time and not cancel it for other um, responsibilities because I have a responsibility to myself and to the other work that I have to honor as well. Unless rambly terms, uh, writing time cannot be sacrificed because writing is what fuels my anxious little monkey brain like back to where it needs to be yeah um just how i plan to execute the switch i'll work on and hopefully by my next side hustling video i'll have a better idea of how i'm going to rebalance this in 2021 also possibly if 2020 has taught us anything it's that life is too fragile to not be spending the majority of your energy on the thing you love to do most or like with the people you love most like I mean, we, it's too fragile to not be doing what you love. Um, and I know it's not possible for everyone and I am so privileged and lucky to be doing, for the most part, what I love. Um, the different things I love, including making videos, sewing, designing things, creating stuff with my hands and creating stuff in my little imaginary friend world um, by writing. So because I have that chance, I've spoken a lot actually inside hustling about how I feel guilty that I have so much privilege in this uh, area, so much uh, opportunity to be doing what I love. And so anytime I don't get anything done, that's why I really pile on myself. Cause it's like, you have every chance, like, why haven't you done the thing? Um, but of course, because life happens, ugh, it's not really always under my control. Um, but I think that's something 2020 has taught me is that, you know, you need, I, there's a lot of work and I want to do. There's a lot of writing I want to get done and I have to give myself the time to do it. Otherwise I'll have regrets and I don't want to have those. Also, I have a note here that says writing still requires mental energy and how well can you focus and have mental energy in 2020? But also this is a note to myself because a lot of times I plan like my time off from work. I'm pointing at my computer, my PC um, is writing time, but writing is also work. So like, although I'm just sitting for like, 10 hours plus a day writing and editing, I am, my brain is still whirling that whole time. So I'm still exhausted after a week. I'm as exhausted after a week of writing as I am after a week of intense sewing and costuming. So like my rest days actually have to involve 
and bear with me. Rest, like proper sitting around watching movies or, you know, I actually baking. I baked some cookies this last week and that felt nice. Um, or like doing more restful things, like just chilling. Um, it's a hard one for me to get through to myself, honestly. <clears throat> so yeah, those were my goals for 2020 and that was kind of how I did on them. Um, I did accomplish some other things though and I'm so sorry to add to the here's all the things I did in 2020 and you didn't do anything like current situation that's going on. Um, but again, these diary videos are for you to watch my journey, but also for, for me um, to be able to look back on and also just to contextualize my own life. As I've said before, I haven't started therapy yet, so this is what we've got, you know. Um, but accomplishments for 2020. I did edit through both of my novels. I did a pass through both my first novel and my second novel. I have two. They're a sequel. Um, or the second one is a sequel to the first. Um, so I especially edited through my second novel again after having a proper break. Um, I hadn't really given myself enough time away from the manuscript. This past year I had several months away from the manuscript, um, not looking at it at all, and then I went back in there and did a, like right before I started working on the cicada gown for Victorian stuff, I like went through that whole draft again. I did change some things, not a ton, but um, I loved being back in that universe and not having to like write completely new chapters or new stories and plots and um, stuff like that because like I didn't have enough exactly energy to create new stuff but I had enough energy to edit it so um, I did do a good edit through both my first and second novel. So that's check. Good. I'm glad about that. Um, I also wrote 44,000 ish words of prequel stuff for that same universe. I had written about I think 50,000, 50 to 60,000 words in 2019 for this prequel stuff that I was working on. This year I wrote another 40,000 words of that. I don't know if anything will ever come of that or of any of my writing, but uh, I really like, again, I, clearly I love playing in the universe that I've been working in. Um, so I wrote even more in that. So it was very unstructured stuff. It's not like planned to ever become a book, but now of course it's long enough to be a book. Um, so I did write some new stuff when I was feeling capable in this last year. So that's nice that I didn't completely, I didn't write nothing. I still got a lot done. It's just stuff that isn't structured into a book. So I'm not like, I didn't write like a new book in 2020, but I wrote a half a book's worth of stuff in a bit of a mess, you know? And then again, of course I did make those 61 actually uh, finished garments last year. So I made 61 items of clothing and or costuming. Um, that's not counting like any other random things I made like, uh, jewelry and stuff like that. But I, you know, hope to sew a lot less next year, but we'll get to that in the goals video. Here on YouTube, I did make 75 videos plus another 15-ish videos over on Patreon as well. So I do a monthly pattern drafting, sewing, pattern drafting, or pattern drafting and sewing. Some months I only do the pattern drafting um, just because I don't have time for another sewing project, uh, um, depending on how much sewing I'm doing on the main channel, or I call it the main channel, but um, it's just, it, it's all on the same channel. Just some things are only visible to patrons, which thank you so much patrons. And thank you for all of you. Uh, and I'm sorry, I always feel bad that I can't, or I don't share those videos with everyone, but this is, you know, part of the side hustle and situation is like, I'm trying to make money so that I can move out and live and pay my student loan payments and, buy more fabric and new lighting for the set and things like that. And Patreon makes that possible for me. They make my career possible, especially because YouTube, there was definitely a huge adpocalypse this year where YouTube, I had finally reached, you know, I decided to quit my outside part-time job uh, last year because YouTube had finally reached enough money to like pay my student loan payments and my bills each month, which again, are not a ton because I live at home. I have free rent. I don't like, you know, have car payments or anything um like huge it's just student loan stuff and then like netflix and adobe for editing the videos and uh, music service for the, all the music i use in my videos and stuff like that so i have some bills but it's not like a normal adult's bills um, and i was able to pay most of that with my youtube revenue uh, as of the end of last year and then youtube revenue took a huge nosedive this year for several months um, so without Patreon, I never would have gotten through that and I would have had to find an alternative job and wouldn't have been able to see, keep doing this. So I'm very thankful to both of all of you who watch and then also to my patrons who have made continuing this as my main hustle possible. Um, it's not, YouTube isn't my side hustle anymore. It's my main, it's my main job. It's my, currently my job. Um, and my YouTube revenue would not have sustained me to continue doing this work this last year 
But I also launched Patreon in general last year, which was uh, a goal of mine to have done. And I'm really, of course, very thankful and glad that I did when I did, um, because again, it buoyed me through the year. And technically last year, an accomplishment of mine was, th it was my full, my first full year as a full-time YouTuber, um, or it being my full-time job. And um, of course, I'm still working on the balances of that, as we can tell, but it's nice that I made it a whole year without like, you know, I don't know, giving up in some ways, but I'm pretty good at not giving up. <laughs> Is that a strange thing to say, perhaps? Um, I'm lucky in that sense that even when, like, I mean, there's some, there are some dark times where I'm like, screw it. I'm going to like try and get like a real person job where I can just clock in and clock out and I don't have to have the stress of my brand being me, me being a brand. Um, like when you have, I don't, I haven't been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder of any, any way. I've never had panic attacks. Um, but I do wonder sometimes if I have some anxiety because there are thoughts that I can't turn off and like, especially at night in the like insomnia zone, it gets kind of irritating sometimes. And I will have dark, like three or four days where I'm just like, ugh, nothing. Like I don't see a way forward doing what I'm doing now. Not like way forward in general. <laughs> I've never been to that dark of a place or like that um, scary of a place. But I do like think, gosh, I, I could just like, can't I go like work at Banana Republic again? Cause I used to like do retail. And it's like, sometimes I just think of like, uh, I would have to balance a lot less, but I don't think I could ever give up my creative passions. Like I just couldn't do it. Um, and then I would just be trying to do them on the side again. And then eventually I would make another go of it. So might as well just keep making a go of it, you know, and stick it, stick with it, stick at it in general, which is what the plan is. Uh, but yeah, 2020 was my first year as a full-time YouTuber. And what an interesting year to try and do that as your job. Um, you would have thought that this would have been a good year to be a YouTuber because so many people are home and therefore probably watching YouTube. But weirdly enough, for the first few months of the pandemic, the uh, views were way down. And then of course the ad uh, people were all terrified so they weren't spending any money. So it was hard to make any money on YouTube. And then nobody was really around, weirdly enough. I don't know what people were doing. Hopefully not brunching with their friends, but some people were, yikes. But uh, I guess it was a test of courage too, in the sense that like, uh, the money went away and the people started going away and the growth that my channel was, my channel in particular, every channel is different, of course. Um, but my channel, I had been steadily growing. And then after in like March or like uh, February, end of February onward, uh, through probably the fall, things just stagnated a ton. And it was hard to stay motivated when the numbers aren't going up just because, and again, I try not to let the mo numbers bother me because that way leads to the dark side. Um, but they do represent like my job performance in some ways. And I have made a lot of jokes this year to the people in my life who maybe don't understand my job very well because it's a new job, let's be honest, that part of the uh, thing that gives me, part of the thing that gives, part of the thing that can stress me out is that YouTube, I have a, as a, as a YouTuber, what a terrible name, as a creator, as someone who teaches sewing online, which is when people ask me what I do, I say I demonstrate sewing online. I'm a sewing teacher for the most part. I mean, it's hard to explain this nonsense. Um, but like I have real time job performance review every day. So like some, in like a normal job, you might have like a performance review, sit down with your boss, you know, every six months maybe, and like talk about how you're doing. But for me, I have comments all day, every day, which is fine. Thank you. So many of you are very, very kind um, and keep me motivated, honestly. Um, but like sometimes there's a negative one. And if you're doom scrolling at 2 a.m., it's not the best time to get a negative comment that really can throw you for a loop, um, which is obviously something you want to try and avoid. But again, in my most anxious after midnight trying to sleep but can't, why are you still on the internet state? It's, they're not a good time to be checking comments, which is something I should just make a rule about, obviously. Um, but like YouTube will tell you on your homepage as a creator, it'll be like, oh, this video is getting like three times less clicks than any of your other ones. Or it gives you like, compared to your last 10 videos, this video is doing the worst. It's like, babe, like, do you have to tell me? Like, I want to be able to check and see how the video is doing without it like comparing me to me all the time and like listing everything. I wish there was a way to customize the homepage, the studio homepage, because 
sometimes I don't want updates like that, YouTube. Like, it's yes, it's good to know, but like, let me go look for that. You don't need to like, <sighs> let me know like how bad I'm doing all the time. That's uh, not very motivating, honestly. So, ugh. YouTube, it's a strange beast, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> Obviously, compared to uh, many other jobs, it is very smooth sailing, uh, especially in this last year. And I, I, I don't have it bad, let's be honest. I have it very, very good, but um, it doesn't mean that I don't have my own little weird struggles too, I suppose. <sighs> you know, if you've watched any of my other side hustling videos, you've heard me ramble on about this kind of stuff at quite length, quite at length, you know? Yeah. But that was my 2020. Uh, whether I liked it or not, which depended on the day, let's be honest. Um, and I'm hopeful going into 2021. I, again, there does seem to be a somewhat light in the tunnel. The idea that I could maybe, maybe go thrifting next fall, you know, keeps me hyped about that. I'm, it's nice to have something to look forward to. Um, it's weird to be looking forward to getting shots, but I am. Um, but we'll talk more about goals and what I plan how I plan to structure my 2021 in the next side hustling video, which again will be coming very, very soon. Thank you so much for listening to my yet another rambling diary entry from me. Mostly me just talking to you today too. So eh, sorry about that. No more nature. I didn't haven't been outside again since the last one of these videos. So no more nature today, but yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much for listening and I will see you all here again real soon. Bye. An extra special thank you to Che, Karina, Ellen, Carol, Lynn, Margaret, Maria, Nancy, Rhonda, Swingularity, Tracy, Beatrice, Brianne, and Lacey. Thank you all so, so much for your support. And yes, this is my cat Cleo sitting halfway up on my lap while I try and watch YouTube around her. I always tell her she doesn't make a great window, but she never seems to understand. <laughs>